In this video, let's take a look at how to use some of the basic tools that are provided in Revit. Uh, we'll start off with uh, trying to complete a small project. Uh, please uh, download the Cottage PDF from your Canvas page and then let's open it up and use some of the information there to develop the, the small cottage that we have. So if you once you open up your uh, Cottage PDF, it should look something like this and there is um, there are some elevations. These are all sketches. So there is a plan, there are two elevations, and there is a small uh, 3D here, a 3D model. If you click on it, it allows you to um, rotate it and see how it looks like uh, in 3D. So this is the model that we want to create uh, inside of uh, Revit Architecture. And uh, we'll start off by extracting some of the information that's provided here. I'm just going to scroll up just a bit. Uh, the first information that we're going to extract is the plan. We're going to base it off the plan and then use it in our model. Now, this is basically how you would probably get information when you're working in a company. Uh, the, the, the main designer would probably give you a sketch asking you to sketch something, uh, use the sketch and develop it in, in Revit. So we're going to kind of simulate the same experience uh, with a small project just to learn the, the basics of Revit as well. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to extract this plan from this PDF and to do that I'm just going to uh, snip the plan and save it. So I'm going to go into my Windows menu and find my snipping tool and uh, I'm going to say new, I'm going to snip this section here. That's, that's probably enough. And I'm going to save my file on my desktop. Oops. Maybe that didn't work. Let me do it one more time. No. Uh, all right. I'm gonna click new, select this, and that's it. I'm gonna save it by clicking on the save button and saying cottage on my desktop. So I have my image now uh, saved onto my desktop. I can close this off. And that's what I'm going to use to base off uh, the plan on. Now I'm going to open up Revit. So the first, when, when you open up Revit, this is the first screen that you're going to see. And like what we did previously, I'm going to use uh, the templates that comes with Revit and use that in order to model my small cottage. So I'm going to click on New and it's going to open up the dialog box which asks me what template I want to use. Now this is the template that we used previously. So I'm going to use the architectural template which is a much more simpler uh, template and for the per, uh, project of this nature, like a small project, that would suffice. So I'm going to use the architectural template and I'm going to say uh, OK. And it's going to create some of the, uh, the drawings like the schedules, maybe not the schedules, but the plans and such. Uh, it's going to create a template for me to work on. So once it creates the, the basic uh, document, you'll see two levels uh, and you will see ceilings and then you'll have the elevation, the floor elevation, the basics, not, not, not too many details. So there are no schedules, there are no sheets like what we saw previously, the construction template. It's very rudimentary and that, that's, that, that's fine. That works for us uh, quite nicely. So the next step is to uh, bring in our drawing into uh, Revit. So for, for that, I'm going to go into the insert uh, because we need to bring in a JPEG inside of Revit. So we need to insert it into Revit, kind of similar to the way that we uh, worked with SketchUp, where we went to file, we went to import and we selected an image uh, of a plan and then we brought in and scaled it the same uh, uh, that we've done in AutoCAD as well, where we uh, import an image and then we scale it uh, within AutoCAD uh, before we start developing it. It's the same process basically in Revit as well. So I'm going to go into Insert and this time I need to insert an image. So I'm going to click on Image and find where my image is. Uh, my image is this one. I'm going to say once you select it, there are no other options that you can see. It's just uh, images. I selected the image and I say open. And it's going to uh, place it on my um, desktop or the, my canvas rather. And then we have our image. 
Now the next step is to scale it. Now how do we scale it? Like what we've done previously, it's the same uh, way that we've done in other softwares as well. What we do is we take a reference like this dough. Now the doughs, doughs are usually about three feet. So we know that this dough might be the same. Now this is sketch, mind you, this is sketch. So uh, we, we have to make some informed decisions on how we scale it. So we're going to use the dough as a uh as the basis and then uh we'll we'll scale it uh, using that method in order to scale uh this image that we just brought in i'm going to select the image and when you select it you begin to see the boundary as well as the this x in the middle and when you see that you'll see another context panel pop up now this is the context panel when you select something it could be an image it could be a wall it could be a roof whatever you create and select this modify panel should pop up this modify panel when 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 it's a context menu you know that it's, it's a, it has a green shade so that means it allows you to modify whatever contents that you be that you've selected so i'm selecting this and the, what we need to do is uh, like what we've done in AutoCAD and SketchUp is to scale this particular drawing. So I'm going to use the scale tool. Now in the modify panel there are a couple of tools that we can use. Uh, one of these tools is called the scale tool. So we can select the scale tool and start scaling this drawing. Uh, now to scale we need to have a reference uh, 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 dimensions and we know that a dough is usually about three feet and we're going to use it and that's okay because this is a sketch and we can just uh, think of some of these uh, dimensions uh, as, as some things that we know of usually uh, we use three feet as the width of dough so I'm going to use that I'm going to click once on this corner of the dough and move my mouse and click again here uh, to symbolize the two, two uh, sides of the doughs, dough rather, and I'm going to press three feet. I'm going to type in three feet on my keyboard and I'm going to press enter. And when I do that, the drawing automatically uh, scales down to uh, the correct scale of the, the drawing according to the dimension, of course, according to this three feet. And we can see, we can check. Uh, out the the act if the this is the actual dimension by just creating a wall and scene so I'm gonna use this wall and I'm gonna click here so uh, from there to there it's three feet as you can see and uh, we know that it's scaled properly so the next step uh, is I'm gonna zoom out just a bit use my modify tool and move it to the center so that we have it nicely placed in the center now one of the things that I want uh, to do is I'm going to use this as my base and I'm going to start drawing the walls on top of it. And there are a couple of things that, that kind of bothers me about this, this particular setup. One is that uh, if I accidentally select this drawing, uh, I might move the drawing around. Kind of similar to uh, how you would draft using a draft table. Like you would put a base drawing and you would use these drafting dots on uh, in order to uh, secure it to the table. So there is a way that I can secure this drawing to the surface by selecting the drawing and clicking on this pin uh, here on the context menu. So I can click on the pin and as you can see it's pinned now. So I, no matter how I try to move it around, I won't be able to move that drawing. So that, I think that's the uh, that's a good way to secure a drawing. Now another thing that bothers me is that whenever I hover over it, this box pops up around the drawing. Also, when I select it, uh, this pin pops up as well. So I don't want that to happen. I just want to be able to um, draw the walls on top of this. So I'm gonna uh, use this select tool or the, this uh, drop down under the select tool and I'm gonna uh, say uncheck this select pinned elements now this is a pinned element so I'm gonna uncheck this box which says select pinned elements when I do that I no longer can select that uh, drawing so it makes it easier for me to uh, work on this particular uh, drawing and if I wanted to go back and maybe delete this drawing, I can do that as well. I can go here and say select pinned elements. So that way I can uh, 
uh, I'll be able to select it and then once I select it I can uh, unpin this by clicking on the pin uh, icon I can unpin it and then again move it if I want to or delete it if I wanted to but in this case I'm going to pin it and go to select and say select pin uncheck the select pin elements uh, box now we are all ready to uh, start drawing the walls in the next video let's see how we can draw the walls on top of this